In 2016, 23 billion pairs of shoes were produced worldwide. 87% in Asia. Many of these shoes are exported to Germany. There, five shoe pairs are bought per person annually. But under which conditions are they produced? Let's look at the manufacturing of a leather shoe. First, the materials must be produced. This is mainly leather, which is made from animal skin in tanneries, for example in India. Aditya, works in such a tannery, and knows that carcinogenic, and toxic substances can occur during the tanning process. But Aditya doesn't have adequate protective clothing, and is defenselessly exposed to the toxins. These can also be dangerous for you when having skin contact with the leather because they might cause allergies. Aditya also knows that the tannery's toxic sewages contaminate rivers, and that the toxins enter the food chain via contaminated soils. After tanning, the leather is further processed. Some production steps are only made by handwork from home workers like Naga Bay. She sews the shoe upper with the sole. Naga Bay is paid per pair of shoes she made, and earns the equivalent of about 14 cents per pair. Therefore, she often has to work up to 12 hours a day to make ends meet. Unlike her colleagues in the factories, Naga Bay has no regulated employment relationship. As a home worker, she neither has protection against dismissal, nor pension, or health insurance. Ere the shoes are sold in stores, they get branded and thus become brand footwear, which are sold for around 80 to 120 euros each. Nagabe and Aditya merely receive a few cents per shoe pair. Compliance to ELO standards in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals can contribute to improvements in the shoe and leather production. The way to get there goes via voluntary commitments towards binding rules and the cooperation of politics, enterprises, unions and civil society. Working and environmental conditions in the shoe and leather industry will only be effectively improved if all stakeholders promote it. Among other things, specifically living wages and transparency in the supply chain are indispensable. You yourself can do something too. During shopping, you can look out for labels that monitor environmental and working conditions in the shoe and leather industry. Sudvin demands politicians and companies to comply with their due diligence and to prevent human rights risks along the supply chain. This includes supply chain mapping, to increase transparency and to identify human rights challenges. Labor rights and standards must become enforceable and should be adhered. In addition, complaints mechanisms within factories are needed, so that Nagabe and Adija's voices are heard. Until then, both are dependent on your responsible consumption, 